Hey there fellow hunters, Dan from Creepy Creations here again and uh, today I'm going to wire some tea lights up using an adapter. Now there's been some chatter on the forum about doing this and lots of people have tried it and done it um, but I'm actually going to go through the whole process with you with one little twist. So first of all, what do we need? Well we need our tea light and here's uh, one of them here with little tea lights that we all uh, know and love. I bought myself some uh, wire at the little dollar store near here and what I bought is a uh, stereo uh, extension cord with the RCA jacks and we've got uh, two male and two female connectors. Um, it's actually important. Six foot cable so you got lots of length. And the adapter. Now uh, I know everyone's recommending you get a three volt adapter. What if you can't find a three volt adapter? Well I found this adapter, it was nice and cheap, but guess what? It's a phone charger adapter and it doesn't put out three volts, it puts out five. That's okay, I'm going to show you how to deal with that too. Now you're also going to need a soldering iron and some solder of course, if you hadn't figured that part out. And uh, some wire cutters, uh, those are going to come in handy multiple times. And the only other thing we're really going to need is some of these little suckers. And these are diodes. These ones in particular are 1N914 diodes. I posted some information about this on the forum, but I'll mention them again as well. These are extremely common diodes. They're, they're referred to as signal diodes because they're actually kind of tiny. You can see them in there. There they are. They're not very big. Uh, these are not rectifier type diodes. Those tend to fall into the category of the 1N4001, 2, 3, 4 series. Um, but make sure you get these for a couple of different reasons. First of all, um, they're very cheap. Um, they also have a lower voltage drop across them. They have voltage drop up moments exactly one volt. And you'll see why that's important when we're dealing with an adapter that does not produce the three volts that we want. But to start, we're going to take our audio cable and on some of them, you might notice that part way along the wire, they put these little, uh, they have these little knobby things kind of on the, uh, in the middle of the wire. I'm not sure why they bother with those. Oh, it's kind of fuzzy, sorry. Uh, I think it's to keep the wires from doing exactly what I'm about to do here, is to keep them from splitting apart. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters and we're very carefully going to just nip that right in the middle, Oops, like this. Now, by doing that, I can now peel it off the wire so I have nothing else on there except the wire itself. Now, we split it in half. Whole thing all the way. Why are we doing this, you ask? Don't we need two wires to make a circuit? Well, yes we do, but guess what? These are audio cables. There's two wires in each side, so we're good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire my tea lights up so that they have a nice long cable, nice thin black cable so you can hide that in the dark and I'm going to leave the uh, male end on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the female end and that's what I'm going to wire up to the adapter later so that we can actually plug these in and out so that we can disconnect the whole thing at the end of the season when we're done and I can re easily hook them up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about six to eight inches of the wire off the female end of the adapter and we're going to cut it. Oh, no going back now. So now we're actually going to wire the tea light up. Okay, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip the end of this uh, wire down. Now unfortunately my wire cutter, or my wire strippers broke on me so I'm going to have to kind of rough it with a pair of clippers. If you've got wire strippers I would strongly recommend you actually get some because doing it this way is uh, a little more difficult and uh, definitely a little more prone to accidents. Now one thing you have to do when you're being, uh, working with this kind of wire is because there are in fact two conductors in here, what I do is I just take little cuts around the outside of the outside insulation like that until I've gone all the way around and that should be good enough and then very gently put the cutting edges where the cut was and I can just very slowly, whoops, didn't work quite that well. There we go. Peel the end off like that. And here's what we have. And you can see we actually have a center core wire which has uh, some white insulation around it. And then there's a, 
another wire which is the uh, return line which is uh, a shielded wire around the outside. So there are in fact two wires in here. I don't know if you can see that, that clearly, but there they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm always going to use my center wire as the positive side. Um, that way I can keep things consistent and also because that's where the current supposedly would originate from, I am going to make sure that it's inside the double insulation. So I'm just going to trim that down a little bit because I don't need that much sticking out. There we go. And I will do the same with the uh, other piece that's sticking out here. You should always give them a good twist for working with them. That way the uh, ends don't get all frayed and it all kind of sticks together for you. And some of this stuff's pretty fine stuff, so it's a good idea to help keep it under control. So there we go. You've nipped those and we're now ready to actually put these into our tea light. Here's our tea light and it's still working because I've left the battery in so far. So I'm first thing I'm going to do is pop the back off and take the battery out. There we go. And you'll notice on the battery, if you take a close look at them, the big flat part usually has a plus on it. That's the positive side and the little part, or not so little part in the middle, is the negative. That means that this little tab at the center of our tea light here is our negative terminal and the one along the edge there that touches the side of the battery is going to be our positive. So I'll we'll have to keep that in mind when we crack this thing open, which we are going to do right now. And I'm just going to very carefully, or not, pry the, uh, the bottom off my tea light here and hopefully we don't do too much damage on the way out. So let's see what we can, uh, we can do here. Wow, that does not want to come out very easily on this sucker. And I hear snapping noises. Never a good sign. Looks like the brute force method will have to work here. So, fortunately, I'm reduced to breaking the base off because it appears to be glued in place. You can see right there, it's been uh, along there, it's been glued. So, uh, obviously, we're going to have to uh, do a little bit of damage on the way out here. But you know what? It's on the bottom, and no one's going to see it anyway. So. Who cares? There we go. That sounded a little healthier. There we go. And now that we've got the bulk of that off, uh, you can see there's actually a couple little wires on there. Going to the switch and the battery contact. I'm just going to clean this chunk off the side here because we really don't need it anymore. And in fact, if we leave it on one point, it's going to make the uh, T light lopsided if you set it down flat. So there, it's uh, basically done. Got it from the side, no damage, so we're okay. And uh, we now have the tea light in there. Okay, so we've got the base off of our uh, tea light here. And uh, as you can see, we've got our battery holder. And now remember that little middle button part there is the negative side. And if you look on the, uh, the little light that's inside, one wire is definitely longer than the other. So the short one in this case is negative and the longer one is positive. And I think others may have made the similar observation as well. So we don't need any of this junk anymore. So what we're gonna do is actually, uh, you can cut that off or I'm going to just uh, unsolder the wires because really we don't need any of that on there anymore and we might as well just get rid of it. So I'm just going to take my soldering iron and assuming it'll cooperate with me here. Feels like it's warm enough. There's one. And there's two. So now we have our tea light completely removed with just the little light that's left over and it's two little leads and we weren't on there very long with the soldering iron so we shouldn't have overheated it and hurt the little lighting element in there. 
Okay, so our tea light's prepped. Now we just need to prep the ends of our wires here so that uh, they can be soldered on fairly easily without, uh, again, overheating the uh, light in the tea lamp. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have what they call tin the ends of the wires, and that just means we're going to apply some solder to them directly without actually connecting them up to anything. Okay, so we're going to tin our wires. Um, I've actually forgotten to twist the ends of this one here, which is kind of important because I told you to do that at the beginning, so I'm going to do that now. There we go. And I'm just going to get a little bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron to uh, get it started. Come on. There we go. And I'll heat that little wire up. And a little bit on there. And there, that's nicely tinned. And same with the other one there. Do the same. And there we go. Nicely tinned ends of the wires so that it'll. Uh, Connect up. Okay, one last thing before we get things wired up here. I am actually going to uh, drill a tiny hole in the side of my tea light. Uh, this is purely optional. You cut a little notch or something, just someplace for the wire to come out. So I'm actually going to uh, just drill a little hole just above where the bottom is so that uh, we can uh, hide our wire. And there we go. So now I've got a nice uh, tiny little hole you can just see there which will be uh, for our wire to go through. So before we do any more soldering or poking or anything else, I'm going to take my uh, nice wire here that I've uh, tinned the ends on. Nice idea to tin it beforehand too is because now you can poke it through stuff and the wires won't get all frayed because they're all held together with the solder. So, clean the junk out of there and I'm going to poke our wire in through Come on, focus, get on there. There we go. And I'm just going to drop that in through here and pull it out, run it through there. And I'm also just going to tie a little knot in the end here and leave myself about uh, you know, three quarters of an inch or so of the wire still sticking out here. The reason I'm putting a knot in so we don't pull the wire out accidentally. It'll act as a strain relief for us. So when we uh, put it inside the tea light, you can't accidentally tug it out and yank the wires loose. Okay, last step now, we are gonna solder our wires up. So remember, I said the long one was positive and the short one was negative. So I'm going to uh, stick with my game plan here and you put the, uh, the sort of bare wire from the side as our negative. So I'm just going to take a little screwdriver and pry that wire up a little bit so it's a little easier to, to solder. And now that that's like that, I can take my bare wire and I'll get a little bit of solder into my soldering iron. And I'll just come in and touch it to there. And there we go, that should be all we need. You don't have to do very much as long as it's got a secure connection and you can see that it is because it's pulling the light around with it. So I'll take the other wire, which is my positive, and I'll put it in there and we'll do the same thing. Now there's solder on the wire and there was solder on the lead on the lamp itself. So we should just be able to reheat it a little touch there, get it all flowing together. And there we have it. And now both leads are nicely soldered on there. So the last thing we'll do is pull our excess wire through so that our wire stays inside our tea light. And there you have it, a, a nicely wired up tea light. So when we flip it over, we can sit it down wherever we want. Uh, one of the reasons I selected the audio cord is because it's very small and it's fairly flexible, it's not stiff so it'll uh, hide nicely wherever you want to put your tea lights. So the next part is wiring up our adapter for the power supply. So a little interruption there but we're back at it and now we're going to deal with the other end. Uh, so I've got now my female connector and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to trim a uh, little bit of the wire off and again I don't have my wire strippers so I'm going to have to uh, kind of do this the unfortunately the hard way and uh, just kind of nip around the outside of the insulation here. Hope 
hopefully without nipping around the outside of my finger. And there we go. And same situation, I have a little wire on the inside, on the, uh, the outside rather, which is going to be my negative side. And I didn't actually get any off end there, so I'll do the same thing. I'll take a little more. There we go. And there we have it. So I'll trim those up. And there we have the uh, wires, so I'll tin those up and then we'll give our little tea light a test. There we go, nicely tinned and ready to test things out. Okay, I've got my uh, female end of the jack here with my tinned ends. I've got my uh, tea light with the end and now what I'm going to do is use the two jacks to make a connection. There we go. I've got my tea light. I've got my end there and I'm actually just going to use my battery for now to uh, just test and make sure that all my connections are good. Remember I said I was going to use the center wire for positive, so I'll put that on the large flat part of the battery. I'll bring this guy around for the negative side, and sure enough we should... Ah, yay! It works. So there, we've tested our circuit. Now, one thing about current. How much juice does one of these things actually use? Well, it uses 3 volts, we already know that. But how much current? Because that's going to determine how many t lights you can actually run off of your adapter. Take a look at the current rating on your adapter. If it's already 3 volts, perfect. You don't have to do anything other than worry about the current. I actually used my multimeter and measured the current that one of these things actually draws. And believe it or not, it actually changes on the fly as, as it's going. Why? Because the light flickers. It goes to different brightnesses and the different brightnesses draw a different amount of current. However, at its brightest, it draws about 10 milliamps. Why is that important? Well, if you look at a, an adapter like the one we bought, it's capable of producing 500 milliamps. So a little quick math, 500 milliamps divided by 10 milliamps equals 50. That adapter will run 50 tea lights. That's quite a few. So you probably don't even want to run that many off one because you have wires all over the place. But it gives you some idea of how little juice these things actually draw, which is why they can run on a battery for so long. One thing though, if you are going to be running this off an adapter that produces more than 3 volts and you've got to run it through one of our little friends here, little diodes, make sure the diode can handle a current. And guess what? It can't handle 500 milliamps. In fact, if you look at the packaging, you will see that, what does it say right there? 200 milliamps. And that's the absolute max. I wouldn't even go near that high. I would go 75, 80 milliamps, which means one diode can handle about 80 milliamps or about eight T lights. That's still quite a few for a tiny little diode like that, so that's not too bad. If you need to run more, just put the diodes in series with the, or in parallel with each other, and then you can run twice as much current through it and the voltage drop stays the same, okay? Speaking of power, we're not gonna use Mr. Battery anymore. We're gonna use the adapter we bought. So let's uh, deal with that. First things first, unfortunately we cannot use the end that we they so nicely provided for us so that we have to kiss goodbye with Mr. Clippers. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to strip the ends of the wires. So wire stripping time yet again. I really wish I hadn't broken my wire strippers. So we'll uh, carefully nip around the outside here. Now, I don't even know what's waiting for me in here, so uh, we're going on this little adventure together here. There we go. Oh, look at that. Two wires. How handy. Well, there had to have been at least two in there, but they haven't done it like the audio wires. They've actually run two separate wires. Black and a red. 
Hmm, I'm guessing black is probably going to be positive, or pardon me, red is probably going to be positive, and the black is probably going to be our ground. So I'll strip the ends off, we'll stick a voltmeter on there, and we'll find out for sure. Off of each end. There we go. So, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're going to make an assumption here that black is negative. And red is positive. And if we take a look at the, how about that? Look at that. 5.56 volts, so a little over 5 volts. Not bad. At least we know that we got the polarity right, otherwise, because it's a digital meter, if we were adding backwards, it would say negative. So we guessed right. What a surprise. Well, now we know what we're dealing with. So we can uh, make our modifications to the power supply. Okay, a little bit of math time. The uh, power supply puts out 5.56 volts. We'll call it 5. The extra half, eh, not going to matter so much. So we got about 5 volts. What does our T-Light need? 3 volts, which means we got to get rid of 2 volts somewhere. And that's where our handy dandy little diodes come in. Each diode drops almost exactly 1 volt across it. So in this case, we are going to need 2 of these little suckers. Small enough for you? Yeah. Okay, we're going to need two of these. We're going to hook them up in series and connect them up to the output of our power supply. And that will drop our 5 volts down to 3 volts and uh, should run our tea lights very handily. So let, let's give it a try. And if it blows up, well, I'll do it first. Funny little thing about diodes. They're kind of peculiar little creatures because the current only goes one way. So you'll notice on the body of the diode there's a little black stripe. That's the positive end. That's where your positive will end up, which means when you wire it up, this end will be connected to the positive end of your connection, and the positive current will flow through and come out. In other words, that end has to point back to where your negative would have been. Seems kind of counterintuitive, but wire a couple of these puppies up, and you'll see what happens. Okay, we did our really heavy-duty math there. 5 minus 3 equals 2, so we're going to need two diodes. So I'm going to make it real easy. I'm going to take the striped end of one, put it near the non-striped end of the other one, and give them a little twist. Like so. And then I will just quickly solder that so that it isn't going anywhere. There we go. Whoops. There you go. So, there, two solder diodes. Now, I don't need all that excess, so I'm just going to nip it off. In fact, I don't need a lot of this excess, so I'm going to nip off there and there. Now, I'm going to take my power supply. Did you remember to unplug yours if you've been fooling around with it up till now? Please remember to do that. You really don't want to be doing this even if it's live. I know, it's only 5 volts. But still. Tin the ends. Here's that to come back to visit. I don't know why. I'm also going to tin the ends of my diodes while I have the chance. Oh, a little extra solder there, but uh, that's okay. There. And I'm going to take the non-striped end of my diode and attach it to my red wire. And there we have it. So, does this thing actually work? Well, let's find out. So, I'm going to take my connector. And remember, the middle one is going to be my positive. So, we're going to put that to the diode. Take my negative one. 
We just have to get ourselves organized here. I've got the positive end on the diode and I'm going to just take the negative end and put it on the negative side of our adapter. Solder that into place and it looks like we're okay. So we're up for a test. Truth time here. I've got my wired up uh, power supply uh, with my diodes. I've got my connector. I've got my T light with my other end of the connector. And we'll see what happens. Woohoo! It works. And it flashes and flickers just as we'd expect it to. And we haven't burned it out. And it seems to be running just fine. So there you have it, the complete conversion of an adapter from 5 down to 3, hooked up to our tea light, and you can see it's uh, happily doing its thing. So you can uh, adapt those for uh, whatever uh, props and haunts uh, you care to put them in. Uh, any questions, email us at creepycreations at telus.net. See you next time.